I'm going to try my best. I've got a couple of cock rots in my mouth right now. If I spit one out and it, and it comes towards you, just, just kind of move. <laughs> but I promise I'm not spitting cough drops at you on purpose. But All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with things and um, get everything rolling with it. Um, I'm going to go through some announcements if I can find them in my list of stuff here. Um, let me see our... Uh, don't forget about our food pantry and our five-year plan. Um, we got the uh, bank statement back, and I was wrong. We don't owe 14000 on that building. We owe 12600 So it's always good to be wrong that way. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that was good, and we'll update the little thing back there too. And then don't forget about choir practice, first and third Saturday of the month. The men's group is going to be meeting at McDonald's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Um, board meeting is going to be the 19th at 5 o'clock at the Fellowship Hall. Um, January 21st, we're going to be starting our biggest loser challenge here. Um, there's a paper in the four-year thing there. It looks like that. That's the rules. And um, you can look at that. And if you want to sign up, um, there is a sign-up paper there on that front table there, um, back there. A couple of people asked me about that. And you can sign up for that back there. And we're going to start on January 21st. And when we do, there's a little release you've got to sign and everything. Um, but, yeah, any questions, you can see me. And then Saturday, January 24th at 8 a.m., uh, Brother Rich May, he's the interim pastor at Danville Covenant. Um, he has a community interdenominational men's group. It's called REAL, and I don't know what that stands for. Uh, but um, they're meeting at Faith Church in Danville at 8 a.m. on the 24th. If anybody wants to go to that, I told him I would announce it. Also, we're going to be meeting at the, at the depot at 11 o'clock on the 14th of February for a Valentine's banquet, and that's just for anybody that wants to go. And then the midwinter retreat I announced this morning, the dates have been changed on it to February 27th and 28th. Um, so our new district and superintendent can come, and he's going to be our speaker. And then um, Brother Marvin Jones is going to be leading worship again. If you're interested in that, um, let me know. Uh, we have to have our registration turned in by the 16th. So there's that. And uh, I've already talked about um, the uh, TNT. We talked about that this morning. Uh, remember, the kids are going to have to raise a bunch of money. So uh, um, look forward to uh, some candy bars and, and things like that. And, and if you want, you can buy those. Uh, you can buy those by the case. You don't have to buy them up by the candy bar at a time. Um, so if you got a sweet tooth, you just go ahead and buy you a case of them. So, huh? Yeah, while we're doing the Biggest Loser, we're gonna. Hey, that can be our prizes we can give out, like a candy bar. <laughs> See, that's my plan. I'll give that to everybody else, and then I'll. There, there it is. Y'all, y'all done found me out. All right, uh, prayer requests. We have uh, Janet Keith. That's Judy's sister. Her uh, husband passed away. And then um, Eric Johnson, um, which is um, uh, Dale's sister, LaVon. It's her son-in-law. He's, uh, um, um, he's had, what, two surgeries so far on his leg? It, well, they're both on his leg. Um, he was in a car wreck yesterday, and he broke his leg. And, um, and, and well, I guess he broke it concussion and several different things and then they've had do two operations on his leg today and um, what said at six to eight weeks probably before he could walk or anything all right all right that's good that's good and how old is Eric they asked me this morning yeah I said I said 20s I, I knew he was they were young yeah so um, but he was in a car wreck so pray for him and uh, what else What else did I go ahead, D? Uh, and continue to pray for my aunt Donna. She uh, she got uh, when did when did I talk to her? Honey, was it Saturday morning or Friday Friday evening? And uh, she had uh, was getting ready to go from my, back. 
home from the hospital on Saturday, and um, so she had been and she had bro fell and broke her hip, and she had been in the hospital for uh, a week, and they had done surgery and everything. And of course, she's still um, battling that cancer and everything. But uh, just continue to pray for her. What else tonight? What else? What else tonight? Unspoken request. A lot of times we don't ask about that, but I'm sure everybody has one. Um, I want to do things a little differently tonight. Um, I've asked Brother Jason to come, and we're going to lay hands on him and pray for him. And, uh, and we're just going to pray for our request as we pray for Brother Jason. So if you all will gather around, if you don't care, and, uh, join with us in, in prayer and, and lay hands on him for some things that he's got going on and everything, so I probably got to stand up here because you're taller than me. That's the downside of having a short preacher. Everybody's taller than them. <laughs> hey, you hold on to that right there. All right. Pray with me, everybody. Father, we come tonight and we just ask you to uh, bless Jason, Father, and his family, and you just move on this situation he's dealing with tonight, Father, and we're just going to ask for you to um, intercede on this, Father, and we're going to ask that um, you touch this whole thing, Father, and you just uh, work it all out, Father, and that your will be done, Father, and we're just going to and place him under your hand and under your control tonight, Father. And we're just going to ask that you give him guidance and direction and wisdom and understanding and um, the ability to know what to do in every and each situation tonight, Father. And we're just going to um, give this over to you tonight. And we're just going to trust you, Father, for the outcome, Father. We're going to um, just give it all to you tonight, Father. We're going to release any burden, anything that... Um, would stand in the way, any um, discouragement, any doubt, Father, just anything and everything, we're just going to give it to you tonight. And we're just going to also ask you tonight to be with these many other requests that we have, those that have loved ones, Father, that have passed on, those that are battling cancer and diseases and injuries and illnesses and all the many different things they have going on in their lives, Father. We're going to ask for a, a physical touch, a spiritual touch, an emotional touch, Father. We're going to ask that you... Um, Touch every person in this building in each and every way that they need to be touched tonight, Father. Whether we need a physical, an emotional, a spiritual healing tonight, we're going to ask that your word and, and our lifting our voices in worship be done in such a way, Father, that, you, that your spirit moves in here tonight, Father, and moves in every situation. We're going to ask for um, hearts to be healed, minds to be healed, and bodies to be healed tonight, Father. We're just going to thank you, and we're just going to praise you and give you all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Y'all ready to do some singing tonight? All right. Caden, where you at, buddy? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you going to sing with him, Job? All right. There you go.
I turn to page 395, level to me. Who's next? You going to sit there? Uh, nah. All right, here we go. Sing with me. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, 
We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Hallelujah, hallelujah We're going to see the King No more crying there We are going to see the King no more crying there we are going to see the king no more crying there we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we're going to see the king no more dying there we are going to see the King No more dying there We are going to see the King No more dying there We are going to see the King Hallelujah, hallelujah We're going to see the King Now sing it backwards no more dying there we are going to see the king no more dying there we are going to see the king no more dying there we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we're going to see the king no more crying there we are going to see the king no more crying there we are going to see the king no more crying there we are going to see the king Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Bring it home. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. Now, if you're going to see him one day, say amen. amen. All right, y'all sounded pretty convinced. I'll let it go with that. That was one of my favorite songs we used to sing at the nursing home. I had to sing it one time through, and then after the first time through, most of them were awake, so we could sing it again. <laughs> All right, who's going next? Who else has got a song or a testimony out there? Brenda, Jack, Dennis, anybody? All right, here comes Jack. And then y'all need to get ready. Dale's going to have to introduce his band back here he's got with us. If you can talk her into it. Wonderful grace of Jesus. <clears throat> if I can get that high. Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sins. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall the praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free for the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. 
Higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgression, greater for than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise His name. Wonderful grace of Jesus, reach into all the lost. By it I have been pardoned, saved to the uttermost. Chains have been torn asunder, giving me liberty. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the master's grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgression, greater for than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching the most defied. By his transforming power, making him just dear child. For a purchase in peace and heaven, for all eternity. And the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, higher than the mighty rolling sea. Higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgression, greater for than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious I used to get that last part, but I can't no more. <clears throat> uh, turn to 214. Uh-huh, 414. Yeah. It's funny how you know you, you get, a little, get a little older and things begin to leave you. God's abiding peace is in my soul today. Yes, I feel it now. Yes, I feel it now. He has taken all my doubts and fears away, though I cannot tell you how. It is mine, mine. Blessed be His name. He has given peace perfect peace to me it is mine mine blessed be his name mine for all eternity he has wrought in me a sweet and perfect rest in my raptured heart i can feel it now he's passing moment keeps me saved and blessed Blows my light, my heart, and brow. It is mine, mine. Blessed be his name. He has given peace, perfect peace to me. It is mine, mine. 
Blessed be his name, mine for all eternity. He has given me a never failing joy. Oh, I have it now. Oh, I have it now. He just prays and prays. My raptures are in ploy and renew my grateful vow. It is mine, mine. Blessed be his name. He has given peace, perfect peace to me. It is mine, mine. Blessed be his name, mine for all eternity. Oh, the love of God is comforting my soul, for his love is mine. Yes, his love is mine. Waves of joy and gladness o'er my spirit roll, thrilling me with life divine. It is mine, mine. Blessed be his name. He has given peace, perfect peace to me. It is mine, mine. Blessed be his name. Mine for all eternity. Amen. I'll let somebody else sing. Nothing's wrong with good old faithful songs. He touched me because, praise God, he touches, should touch us every single day. Touch me and he made me. 
I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to believe in God's word. Jesus. 
Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all. Through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. Very good. The things that I love and hold dear to my heart are just borrowed, they're not mine at all. Jesus, only let me use them to brighten my life, so remind me.
Jack still here? Okay, come on, Brother Jack. I want you to sing one. touch of hands so kind and tender they're leading me in paths that I must try I'll have no fear for Jesus walks beside me
said he'll never make it. They'll never see it through. But they don't know what keeps me going. Lord, I guess they've never met you. And oh, my life was in shambles. Till the day you came along Turned my tears into laughter When you gave me a brand new soul And I'm still holding on Lord, I'll never let you You gave me a smile You touched my heart You touched my soul And the bridges that's behind me Lord, I'll burn them to the ground But I'm still holding on To the best thing ever found only by his wonderful grace Lord it likely not to prosper left hanging over my head said you'll never count for nothing that's what most people see And I've been known to be unsettled Never stayed around too long But you're the treasure that I've been searching for Yes, Lord Lord, I'm still holding on I'm still holding on Lord, I'll never let you go You gave me a smile You touched my heart You touched my soul And the bridges that's behind me Lord, I'll burn them to I'm still holding on to the best thing I ever found and the bridges that's behind me. Lord, I'll burn them to the ground. And I'm still holding on to the best thing I ever found. Oh, I'm still holding on to the best thing I ever found. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, boy, y'all are good singing tonight. <laughs> amen, amen. Good singing, good playing. Well, we're going to be in Nehemiah chapter 1 tonight. I'm going to read to you verses 4 through 11. So if you can be finding that in your Bibles, again, that's Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. And we're going to be reading about a prayer that Nehemiah prayed. And uh, if you'll think back, Oh, I don't know, it's been a while, but we did a Wednesday night study for a little while in Nehemiah and went through the rebuilding of the wall. And it's, um, for the next three or four weeks, we're going to be in Nehemiah and we're going to be talking about um, God rebuilding us and um, kind of rebuilding us as Christians, rebuilding us as people. And the first thing, though, with that is we have to be rebuilt through repentance to begin with, don't we? 
And uh, so tonight we're going to be looking at that, at kind of that subject a little bit, God rebuilding us through uh, repentance. And again, we're in Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. So if you don't care, stand with me and we'll um, read our scripture here and then we'll kind of get right into it and we'll, because we're going to lay some foundation and some groundwork uh, for what we're going to be looking at for the next several weeks. So in Nehemiah chapter, four, or chapter 1, verse 4, it says, When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and obey his commands, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant, to hear the prayer of your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and the laws you have given your servant Moses. Remember the instructions you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if, you, if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my, for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeem by your great strength and your mighty hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this, your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him the favor in the presence of this man. And then it ends with, I was the cupbearer to the king. Father, we come and I thank you for this time of worship and singing that we've had Father, we just ask that we continue to worship you, Father. Maybe not in song, but worship you from our heart, Father, in the receiving of your word tonight, Father. Help us to understand that message that you have for each and every one of us that are here. That special message that brought us all here tonight, Father. That special word from you that we all need to hear. Every one of us, Father, has a word that we need to hear. We need to hear from you. Because that's why we're here tonight, Father, is to worship you, to honor you to give you all glory and all honor and all praise tonight. And we're going to thank you, Father. And we're going to thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that was shed on that cross for each and every one of us, Father, so that we could enjoy eternal life and eternity with you in heaven. We thank you tonight. And we just give you all glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank, you. Amen. thank you all for standing. Um, so, Nehemiah here, he starts out in verse 4 with this prayer. And I'll read it here again. It says, When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. So, Nehemiah is pretty upset at this point. He, he, he's tore all to pieces. He's, uh, um, he's distraught. He's kind of um, depressed and down and just kind of doesn't know what to do, don't know where to turn, don't know which way to go. It says, you know, he mourned, he fasted, and he prayed before the God of heaven and was so just kind of taken by all these things and didn't really know what to do and what direction to go. But in order to understand what, we, what he was so upset about, you got to back up to the beginning of the chapter there. And I didn't read it because it's not part of his prayer, but it kind of sets the foundation as to, as to why Nehemiah was praying and what was really going on during that time and all the different things that, that had happened. And in verse 1 there, that same chapter, it says, the words of Nehemiah, the son of uh, Hakali, in the mouth of, of Kislev in the 20th year, or in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, um, Hananiah, one of my brothers from Judah, with some other men, um, came, they came, I'm, I'm tearing this all apart because I can't understand, I can't pronounce these names, Hananiah, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem, and they said to me, those who survived the exile are back in the province, are in great trouble and disgrace, the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. So Nehemiah, he gets word back um, from Jerusalem, from those that have been there and have visited and seen the remnant of those who had survived and, and stayed there during the exile and during the, the captivity and the, and the word that comes back to him is, uh, is it's no good, Nehemiah. The walls of Jerusalem have been torn down. It says the city gates, all those gates that surrounded Jerusalem, they've been burned with fire. The city's destroyed. Our home's destroyed. Our people are distraught. They're in distress. They're just, uh, there's, there's no hope here, Nehemiah. 
There's nothing we can do. We're just going to be in exile forever. We're never going to return home. We're never going to be where we need to be. We're never going to be where God has, has destined for us to be. And, and we don't know what to do. And Nehemiah is just, I mean, he's beside himself. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know um, how to approach his because Nehemiah is the leader of his people there. He doesn't know how to go to them and tell them that, that Jerusalem's destroyed. You know, they, have, they had dreamed and had hoped about returning home, about going home to Jerusalem. And Nehemiah was going to say, it's gone. Your home is destroyed. There's no walls of protection. The gates have been burned up. And there's nowhere to go. So Nehemiah is about as low as you can go. And the thing that matters to us about this is not about any physical place, but where we are spiritually. Where are we emotionally? Are we in the same place Nehemiah is? In that place of despair, distraught? Our walls have been torn down. Our heart, which is that gateway to our soul, has been burned up with the fires that we've faced, that we go through, that all the things that happen. And, and in a way, this is just a continuation of what we talked about this morning. And we talked about this morning, all the different things. And we talked about being defeated, being broken, being down, being out. And there were people here this morning like that. I can see it on their face as they stood there. You can see a lot from standing up here. You can see how people are responding to things. And you can see it. And we've got a different crowd tonight, but the message is the same. Because it doesn't matter where you're at or, or what's going on. If your life's in shambles, God can change that. God can take care of that. God can deal with that. It says, uh, you know, with the gates burned and the walls broken, it said the people are in great trouble and disgrace. Their soul is just so destroyed. They're just, I mean, they feel like they're a total disgrace. They feel like they're in a total embarrassment. It doesn't have to be that way. Because we can find the same hope in looking in Nehemiah and his prayer as we found in Jesus and in um, and Nicodemus, all these ends, and Nicodemus' visit to him. You know, our main verse this morning, John 3, 3. Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. And that's where our hope is. That's, where, that's what it all stands on is that rebirth and finding that hope that's found in Jesus. That's why we have an invitation at the end of our services. We invite people to come, and we invite them to come and pray, to give things over to God. Because we know that things are accomplished through prayer. That's how we accomplish that new birth, that rebirth. That's how we're rebuilt, it's through prayer. That's how repentance comes, it's through prayer. It's through conversation, not with me or anybody else, but with God. So that's what Nehemiah gives us that example of, is that prayer. Nehemiah in verse 4 again, he says, When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. So this prayer consisted of mourning, weeping, fasting, praying before God. Not, not just coming and, and just making a little statement or saying a little thing or repeating something on a piece of paper or something that somebody tells you to do, but throwing yourself before God. Asking for God's grace and His mercy and His love. Asking God to, 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 to forgive you. Mourning and weeping. Not just giving up. But continually seeking God in God's face. Being serious about it. Well, they call it little tiddlywink prayers. That's what we're, I'm not, we're talking about really getting God's attention. Who wants to get God's attention tonight? If you want to get God's attention, you have to get serious about your prayer. You have to get serious about your prayer life. You have to get serious about your relationship with God. It's not just some place we show up on to hear good music, to learn a little bit about the Bible. 
We're here because we need a serious relationship with God. And we need to reach out to God. And that's what Nehemiah is doing. He is reaching out to God. Verse 5, he says, Then I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and obey his commands. He said, Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant is praying before you day and night. Nehemiah's praying this prayer day and night. He's not just saying it one time and going on. He continually is praying and asking God and trying to move God, trying to change God's mind, trying to get God to change His direction towards Israel and towards His people. He says, Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants. He's praying for all the people, for the people of Israel. And he says, I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. But the thing about that prayer, do you see anything magical about that prayer? No. There's nothing magical about it except the fact that Nehemiah was serious and sincere with God. He was trying to reach God's heart. Trying to move God. That's a scary thing, isn't it? Trying to move God. Trying to change God's mind. But he had no other choice. He didn't know what else to do. He's like the psalmist writes in Psalm 34. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. Verse 17, the same chapter, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their trouble. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. And then Psalm 51, verse 17, it says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. That's how Nehemiah approaches God. He just basically hands God his heart. He says, here it is, Lord. You know my heart. You know what I need. You know what my people need. I don't even know what to say to you, Lord. But you know. Answer my prayer. Not only for myself, but for my people. Show us the way you want us to go. Show us what you want us to do. Show us how you want us to live. And Nehemiah is pouring his heart out to God. Are you struggling with your prayer life? If you are, when was the last time you poured your heart out to God? When was the last time your spirit was broken? When was the last time you were sincere and serious with God? And not just going through the motions of praying. Not letting those things come between us and God. Not letting pride, not letting sin, not letting our, any other motive come between us and God. But approaching God with a clear heart, a clean heart, a broken heart. And just giving our heart to God. If you want to move God, that's what you have to do. That's what's required. But what we do, what we say. Here's what Nehemiah said. First he says, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer. Your servant is praying before you day and night for your service the people of Israel. He said, oh Lord, hear my prayer. Hear me speak. Then he says, I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands and the decrees and the laws you gave your servant Moses. So he didn't ask for God for anything, did he? He didn't have a big long list of, of wants and desires and, and requests, did he? He said, God, forgive me. Forgive our people. Forgive us of our sins. It's the first step. Repentance. Asking God's forgiveness. That, your heart has to be right and you have to be clean before God before you can pray anything else. You have to have a repentant heart. 
A pure heart, a clean heart. That's what's required to be in God's presence. It's the first thing, and that's what Nehemiah does. You also notice something else he, he didn't do either. He didn't play the blaming game. He didn't play the, why God? Why are we going through this, God? Why has this happened to us, God? Why are we in exile, God? He didn't play that game. He knew why they were in exile. He knew why things were going the way they were going. But I wonder how many times do we play the why me syndrome? Or the why me game? Why is this happening to me, God? Why am I going through this, God? Well, there's a couple of reasons. You know, we may be going through trials and tribulations and suffering and hard times just because that's life. And that's what we go through in life. Those things happen. Jesus tells us. John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And he says, in this world you'll have what? Trouble. He says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Don't sweat it. I've got this. James 1, 2 and 4, 2 through 4. It says, Consider poor joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So it could be that. I don't know. I don't know what everybody's heart's like. I don't know what your situation's like. But that's what it could be. Or it could be a consequence of sin, that you have sin in your life that there is sin in your heart, that there are things separating you from God. Sin carries just consequences. There are consequences to sin. And, they, and it's not pretty. Those things don't manifest some things in a pretty way. It could be that. But either way, you can find peace, you can find joy, you can find redemption. Through Jesus. Through asking for forgiveness. Through approaching God with a proper heart and a proper mindset. Through nourishing your prayer life. To getting serious about your relationship with God. Are you serious about your relationship with your spouse? I hope you are. Don't answer that because if you ain't, I don't want to know. But uh, seriously, we take those relationships seriously, don't we? How much more seriously should we take our relationship with God? Our Heavenly Father. One who holds all eternity in His hand. Who offers us all eternity. We have to take it seriously. 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. you all know this. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Verse 11, our last verse there. Nehemiah says, O Lord, let your ear be attentive to this prayer of your servant, to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success to, today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. Lord, hear our prayer today. Help us today. Forgive us today. Restore us today. Rebuild us today. Let us be reborn today. I want to know, is that your prayer today? Is that what you want from God today? Tomorrow and every day? What are you here for today? What are you here for tonight? Are you seeking God? What are you looking for? Let the Holy Spirit search your heart and reveal to you what you're looking for. Last verses I'm going to read to you. It says in Matthew 7, 7 it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door will be opened promise of God. It's Christ's promise to us. Ask. Keep asking. Seek. Keep seeking. Knock. Keep knocking. 
and it'll be revealed and you'll be given the answer to your prayers. So are you looking for another chance? Are you looking for redemption? You may be looking for salvation. It's no myth. Everybody that comes to church is not saved. They're not. Some don't even realize it. What are you looking for? What's the Holy Spirit speaking to you about tonight? I can tell you the first step is repentance. Coming to God with a repentant heart. Dale, do you come, Jared, just come and just play something? Just You don't have to sing or anything. Just play a little something. Whatever y'all want to do, just uh, just whatever. It don't matter. I just want to give people an opportunity to come and to pray and to just do as God has called. Doesn't make any difference. I just want to give you that opportunity to give you that chance. If y'all stand with me as they get ready and get set up. And I tell you what, everybody just close your eyes. And just in just quiet peacefulness, just reflect and listen to the Holy Spirit speak to you. Listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say to you. And then when they start playing, if God has moved you in any way, I would encourage you to come and to lay that on God's altar. So as everybody just quietly just Listen to the Holy Spirit.
you know the words, sing it softly and tenderly. Thank you all for coming out tonight, and uh, don't forget about Wednesday night. We'll be uh, up here back in Daniel, uh, finishing up Daniel chapter 7, I believe. Uh, I was in Bowling Green Wednesday, so I, I skipped out, so uh, left, left Rhonda in charge. <laughs> all right. All hearts and minds clear? All right. Well, lift your hands to heaven and pray with me tonight. Father, we come, and we just thank you for this time, and... And, and we just thank you for the wonderful worship and the singing, Father. We thank you for your word. And we're just going to ask you to uh, touch us with it tonight, Father. Help us to use this word each and every day of our lives. Help us to uh, glorify you each and every day of our lives, Father. Help us to always approach you sincerely and with a broken heart, a contrite spirit, Father. Help us to... Uh, live each and every day to glorify you and, and to serve you. Father, help us to share the gospel with all we come into contact with. Father, we ask for a blessing on each uh, family that's represented here today. We're asking you to touch them and move on their situations and be with them and just uh, take us home safely and just bring us back at the next time. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.